everybody and welcome. In this tutorial, I want to kind of do a follow-up on a tutorial I previously done using Mixamo and Autodesk Maya. Mixamo is a great way to pull in 3D characters and rigs from all sorts of different programs. About a year ago, I did this tutorial and I got some questions about how do you rescale your rig or how do you add other character animations to that same file. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. Mixmo is a part of Adobe, and it's a really great kind of asset, especially if you have Adobe Creative Cloud. So we're going to go to Browse Characters, and for this one, we're going to keep it simple and just kind of use our, our kind of male robot-esque character here. So you can see it already has a preloaded animation, nothing too fancy, and you can see all the different animations you can get from these specific characters. So Mixmo is really easy. You just simply select the animation of a choice and it's going to go ahead and give you that animation. So now that I have this, you can see, you know, it comes with a full skeleton and there's different cameras. I'm going to go ahead and download a few things. So I'm going to keep things pretty default for this tutorial. You could imagine that this would work with any of these characters or if you have a character that you bring in and rig through Mixamo, uh, which I talked about in my last lesson, you can totally do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download. And in this case, I want to bring in my character with the skin and you could adjust the frame rate to match Maya. I think my frame rate currently is at 24 frames a second. We talk about keyframe reduction. I'll link that tutorial in the comments below. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download and we're going to just download this specific rig and that's going to come in. It's called defeated. It's going to take a few seconds. It's just a couple megabytes, nothing too bad and we'll go ahead and pull that up. And I'm gonna just throw these on my desktop. Now that I have that, let's pick a few other animations. So I try to pick the animations that have um, this specific character. It's just gonna make it a little easier. In this case, the only change I'm gonna make is I do not need the skin of the character here. So I'm gonna do without skin, and I'm gonna download that. And just let that character sitting and laughing Go ahead and pull that. And I'm just dropping these on my desktop so I can find them. And then maybe one here, there, there's like a taunt pose. Once again, I have the original character skin. I just need the rig and the keyframe information. So I'm gonna hit download on that one. And I think three will be a good amount for us to kind of work with. So now that we have this taunt animation, so again, two characters without skin, one with skin. Let's go ahead and open up Maya and bring in our character. So I'm going to just drag and drop the character with skin right into my Maya interface. And the first thing you're going to notice is how big this character is. So a lot of people were a little curious because if we go ahead and play this, you're going to notice, and I'm going to add myself a couple more frames, you're going to notice that when I select this, there's a ton of keyframes, actually probably even more than that. So we'll do a thousand. There we go. So you can see there's quite a bit of keyframes there and people are having trouble trying to translate the character. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna to go to Create, and I'm gonna to go to my NURBS primitives, and I'm gonna create a NURBS circle. You most likely, if you've downloaded a rig offline, you've seen these, but these are kind of these fun, and you don't have to do this step, but it's always fun to kind of have it look a little funky. Just these kind of world controls, sometimes they're called God controls of your rig. That's perfectly fine. All I'm going to then do is grab my curve and grab my hips here and hit the letter P as in parent on my keyboard. Now, if that doesn't work, let's undo it. You probably grabbed them in the wrong order. So let's try grabbing the rig, holding control, grabbing the circle and hitting P. And then when you grab that, sure enough, you can scale it, you can move it. This doesn't have any keyframes on it, which is really nice. So when we scale this down, and I hit F, now it's smaller, just to show you that it works. The character kind of still plays through their, their keyframe here. And I'm actually gonna go back to my, uh, my playback as well, and I'm gonna go ahead, and I think I'm gonna set this to real time to see if I can't get it to work. Yeah, that's gonna look a little better. Awesome. All right, so let me undo some of this and just pull him back at 100%. So now that we have this character set up. The next step before we import our other animations is we wanna create a character set. So to create a character set, you can go to the bottom of your screen. We're gonna select our new character and do character set editor. Now, when you look in the character set editor, you're gonna see that we don't have much in the term of character set. So how do we create a character set? Well, it's really easy. 
You're going to go to animation at the very top of the screen, and you're going to go to key, and you're going to find create character set and hit the option box. When that pops up, you're going to call your character whatever you want it. But a few things, and let me reset my settings so you can see. You're going to want to check the hierarchy below selected node. That just means it's going to grab this curve and then everything else. And we're going to also want to ch check all keyable because we want to bring in all those different unique keys and joints and things like that. So I'm going to hit create character set, give that a moment, and you're going to see now that we have a character set in our scene, we have what seemingly is a pretty cool animation. All right, but how do we get those other animations in there? Well, this is where it becomes really, really nice. So if I want to override this animation, I can simply take that laughing, sitting laughing file and just drop it in. And what will happen is it's going to read, including that scale button, it's gonna read and override my animation. So if I wanna put the taunt animation in, I just drag and drop at zero, it's gonna read and override my animation. Well, this is fantastic now, because now not only can I scale each of these new animations up, but in a quick drag and drop, I can do quite a few different things, and they're all under my different character set here, and everything is fine and dandy. Now, if I go ahead and let's increase the keyframes to quite a bit, maybe like a thousand, just so you can see. I have all these keyframes. What if I want to see all of those animations? Well, this is where Maya becomes kind of the Lamborghini of animation, so to speak. We can go into our different uh, editor tools. So we're going to go to Window, Animation Editors, Tracks Editor. And we're going to pull that on the screen. The Tracks Editor is essentially just saying, hey, you're going to have a bunch of different animation tracks. The trick here is you need to give it enough um, space between different tracks. So I'm going to do a Create Clip, and that's going to create a clip of just this animation. Do, 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 playing it's doing its thing. Now I'm going to drag my cursor away from this block and I'm gonna drag in maybe the sitting defeated and let's see what happens. That's gonna create a new block for us, but you'll notice it kind of put it on zero again. So if I go ahead and create a clip there, boom, now I'm going to have both of them. So it's a little confusing when you first see it because it looks like it overrid the uh, character, but now you can see, if I can get this to kind of snap here to zero, I play one and then it just snaps to the other, which is really helpful. There's even a little blend option, which is kind of cool. Doesn't always work well, but it's right here where you can hit blend and it will kind of kind of sit. It's kind of fun it, depending on the, the animations you have and whatnot. So I can kind of do that and we can run through here. You can see this is quite a long clip. Let me go enter my thousand frames here and let's find maybe an area where it's not and we'll add the taunt. I think the first one was the taunt, maybe the defeated animation back. And we can, again, create our clip. And now we'll have three and we can move that in and out. So now we have defeated, sitting, one with the blend. And in a matter of minutes, as you can see, all of them, which I love, are completely scalable. So we can go in here and change them. A lot of you were asking how you rotate it or translate it to somewhere differently in your scene. That world control will do that for you. And that is it. This isn't a very long tutorial, but hopefully it follows up on all of the cool rigging things we learned from Mixamo. Mixamo, again, is a great resource, not only for students, but for anyone who is attempting to kind of, you know, get a jump start in rigging in their animation workflow. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to hit the like and the follow button if you want to see more.